Tesla shares are soaring. Earnings of 72 cents a share, a pretty a good beat on 58 cent estimate. Revenue just shy of expectations. Investors uh, focusing, though, on this prediction from Elon Musk on the uh, call afterwards. So you're taking a bit of risk here. I, I, I do want to give some, some rough estimate, which is, I think, 20 to 30 percent vehicle growth next year. Um, you know, notwithstanding negative external events, like if there's some force majeure events, like some big war breaks out or interest rates go sky high or something like that. Joining us now, Tim Higgins, Wall Street Journal business columnist and a CNBC contributor. He, he does say, Tim, that these are just my best guesses. I don't even know if there's anything goes into his, his best guesses. But the first, uh, uh, so far this year, I think deliveries are down 6% or something. So to go to 25 to 30, that takes a leap of faith. But I, I'd never discount. I'd never discount Elon Musk. But he, he, he just says, look, this is just uh, a guess. Is that something that... It, People should buy the stock on? Just rolling the dice, right? Now, you know, it's back to kind of that optimism that investors like about him. They, it's kind yeah. of been missing in the last few years, that kind of target of potential growth. It's not the 50% year over year growth that uh, investors were accustomed to in the past few years, but it's back to, hey, things are going to be exciting. And this is a growth story. This is a growth stock. And you have to have growth to kind of fuel that enthusiasm. So I think investors are excited about that. They're also excited about not just uh, the profit that they saw, but the kind of the profitability. Those gross margin figures uh, are, are exceeding expectations. And back to kind of some of the glory days that they remember uh, from a few years ago, uh, you know, that had kind of gone away as he was chasing growth that wasn't the same kind of growth and it wasn't the same kind of profitability. So those two levers, people are pretty excited about that, I think. It's kind of it's all so multifaceted and interesting that, yeah, profits are pretty, the margins go up because the selling the regulatory credits to other companies is a hundred percent profit margin, and they got that pure stuff. Pure profit, pure profit, yep. and the other yep. companies are like, please, sir, can we have? You know, they need those regulatory credits. It's kind of it's it's interesting the way it works, but well, profit is profit, and he can use he's going to use that ten billion. Or, or not 10 billion, he's going to use 10 billion for AI and robotics and everything else, uh, autonomous driving. I think, don't you think investors also like that he's not going to do a $25,000 cheap Tesla? He says it makes no sense. And they're going to work on the cab or the, the robocab instead. Well, you're, you're pointing out an interesting dynamic here that Tesla, a unique strength that it has. The EV market is struggling right now outside of Tesla. And automakers are pulling back their plans. And because they're pulling back plans to sell EVs, they've got to buy these regulatory credits around the world. But Tesla benefits from that. They're out there as the leader in EVs, and then they, they're benefiting from others struggling there. And then they're able to take that money and invest it in AI and invest it in autonomous cars. Now, the, the idea that he's giving up on the $25,000 car that you will drive as a human I think really rattled people at the beginning of the year. He's just confirming what the market had already kind of had digested on, on reports earlier this year. So I think people are beyond that. And now seeing the actual car and seeing some timelines for putting uh, autonomous vehicles on the roadway in the next few years, uh, you know, there's that, that thing to be excited for again. Subsidies are one thing, but I mean, the regulatory credits, this is basically. Uh, thank you, Uncle Sam. I mean, that, that's what or, or wherever th these are being sold. That's that's not like an operating. It is and it isn't right. And it's you can't say it's not non recurring either, because they probably have plenty of these in the future to sell, too. So I don't know how to look at that. It, it doesn't it, it, it looks almost like government assistance. You know, it's one of those things that over the years has just kind of been hanging over the company. It's been there. It has gotten bigger. And it looks like it's going to continue to be an important part of the company, as, as we just talked about the issues the other uh, uh, competitors are have. But you also have this interesting dynamic where Elon Musk is out there and with his political hat on, saying he doesn't want government help and that, right. the, and that he doesn't want this stuff, and siding with Donald Trump saying the government shouldn't be helping this stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's... You know, I, I, no one's expecting to, to, uh, to turn it down, I, I guess. So the, what about the timeline for the no steering wheel, no pedals? That's really happening near term? 
Well, it's super ambitious. Uh, you know, the idea that maybe in California and Texas he could be having Model Ys out there uh, in autonomous mode driving, that's conceivable. We see Waymo out there. Uh, but the yeah. idea of putting a car on the road without steering wheels and without pedals, uh, that's that's a big lift that requires uh, uh, some special permissions um, and uh, a lot of regulatory issues ahead. Uh, just the idea of putting a robot taxi in California is a lot of uh, paperwork for Elon Musk and Tesla that they doesn't appear that they've actually begun. They they don't they're not running vehicles in the state uh, without people behind the wheel currently. And so the idea that they're going to have a business out there doing that in the near term is, uh, well, that's very ambitious. Selling average selling prices for the models were uh, were down. And that again, the regulatory credits offset some of that around the world. How, how was China? China's helping, definitely. That's a big part of, of the business now. Uh, you know, it's interesting. You, you hit this interesting point where uh, Tesla has been having to decrease its prices to the consumer to kind of uh, improve sales, to help that sales growth. Uh, this pat the final quarter of the year, the, the guidance kind of implies that they're going to have a, a, which they should have, be having a blockbuster sales year uh, a quarter, if you will, that's uh, probably going to require some price discounts, according to some experts. And so you've got this interesting dynamic where you're seeing prices are down, but yet their gross margins are up. So it kind of uh, once again indicates that they've been able to take price and the cost out of some of those vehicles and also help by the, the regulatory credits. I like I, I mean, I do like the optimism. Um, he wants investors to view Tesla not as a car company, but as a robotics and an AI company with an eventual market cap of 30 trillion, in his view. I just like saying 30 trillion because 30 we couldn't trillion. believe, we, yeah, we couldn't believe when a, when a company hit a trillion and then two trillion and then three trillion, 30 trillion. You think a trillion is cool, 30 trillion is really cool. Right. Why is that the ultimate? Does it end? Does the market cap stop there? The company just doesn't keep going. What's the time? I frame think on for that? now, I think for now we need to stop at thirty. What's the time frame on that? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I was thinking. I hope I'm there to watch it happen. That may take the singularity for me to Tim. That we even you, we might need the uh, <laughs> the, the uh, you know we need to be part silicon and part human uh, for us to see that. Maybe either that or and we go back to. Yeah, start going back to church every Sunday, if we don't get close enough on that. Uh